Hi everyone, welcome to another AP Statistics video. Forgive the pun on the title, but I thought it was funny, so I included it. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about probability, again, because, you know, it's a very important subject in statistics. If you haven't noticed, a lot of the questions you see on the exam are about probability in some way, shape, or form. And today we're going to be talking about disjoint events and what they mean for scenarios when calculating probability. So let's begin. I'm sure you already know this, but these are the basic rules of probability. For any in single event, for any single event, we'll call it E in this case, its individual probability has between 0 and 1. You've covered that before. And in the sample space, if you have multiple events, their total probabilities, when added up, cannot exceed 1. It makes more, make common sense, right? You can't have any sort of probability greater than 1 any time. Now, let's talk about when you can add prob probabilities of events together. If two events, E and F, are disjoint, the probability of E or F, so this would be a union of the two, right? E or F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. And here's another, here's another rule. It's called the complement rule. And for any event E, the probability of E occurring plus the probability of E not occurring has to be equal to 1. So let's take a look at rule 3 in a little more detail. When we say two events are disjoint, what we're saying is that these two events cannot happen at the same time. Think of it this way. Um, the probability that the, the light, that a certain light bulb is on and off. Well, if the light bulb is on, it cannot be off at the same time. And for the sake of, for the sake of argument, let's just ignore physics and all those crowded little riddles they have. But anyways, let's just say, you know, when the light bulb is on, it can also be off at the same time. When, it, when you see an event that is disjoint, that means that if this one outcome occurs, the other outcomes cannot occur. When two or more events cannot happen at the same time. Again, a disjoint event is an event that can't happen at the same time as another event. And another common word you're... You know, another common word you will see to say something is disjoint is mutually exclusive. Yes, I know, I missed the X. I know an X goes there. Forgive me for the spelling. But this isn't spelling. This is AP stats, and we're all going to worry about how, knowing how to work with probability. So anyways, when you see something disjoint, it's also going to be called mutually exclusive. And they both mean that two or more events cannot happen at the same time. So let's move on. So this is just an extension of the rule we see here, right? The probability of one or another disjoint event is the probability of each added together. So if events E, 1, 2, 3, 4, yada, 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 all the way up to some number K are disjoint events, they, if they can't happen at the same time, the probability of one or another is simply going to be the sum of those events added together. And here they've stated it in nice words. In words, the probability that any of these k disjoint event occurs is the sum of the probabilities of the individual events. So let's try an example. A large auto center sells cars made by many different manufacturers. Three of these are Honda, Nissan, and Toyota. Consider a chance experiment that consists of observing the make of the next car sold. Suppose that the probability of a Honda is 0.25, the probability of a Nissan is 0.18. And the probability of someone buying a Toyota is 0.14. So when you read a question like this, you have to ask yourself, are these events disjoint? And yes, they are. And here's the reasoning why. They're looking for the next car sold. If the next car sold is a Honda, then it cannot be a Nissan or a Toyota, right? I mean, you can't buy a single car that's of two brands. That, that's impossible. So when one car is bought of a certain brand, the other two brands automatically are not available for purchase, and there can only be one brand for each car sold. So when one car is bought, the other two brands cannot, exist, cannot be purchased, so yes, they are disjoint events. Only one brand can be bought at a time. And so they want to figure out the probability of, of someone buying a Honda or a Nissan or a Toyota, right? Now, because they are disjoint events, the probability of, of buying one or another or another is simply going to be the sum of those probabilities. That's what we saw back in a previous couple slides ago, Rule 3, right? The sum of the probability of 
one or another disjoint event is simply going to be the sum of the probabilities, and that's what they've done here. So the probability of purchasing a Honda, Nissan, or Toyota next is 0.57. We just summed up all the individual probabilities, right? Now here's a next level question. The probability that the next car bought is not a Honda or a Nissan or a Toyota. Well, we already know that the probability of buying the next car bought being a Honda, Nissan, or Toyota is 0.57, right? And the complement rule we saw a couple slides ago says the probability of some event occurring plus the probability of that event not occurring is equal to 1, right? So if we, just, if we subtract this probability, probability of it occurring, from 1, we get the probability that the next car bought will not be a Honda or Nissan or Toyota. And that's basically the summary on disjoint probability. And when, when you see it on the AP exam, you're definitely going to like it, and you're definitely going to recognize it easily because you'll know, hey, this is the one I can just add up, and it's going to be real easy. Some of the other probabilities we focus on, they're much harder. But I hope this video taught you all you need to know about disjoint, disjoint events and probability, and we'll work on more complex problems next time.